This is about pneumothorax, hemothorax, and tension pneumothorax. In order to understand what goes on with the pneumothorax, you really have to understand normal mechanics of breathing, what happens normally. So normally, there is this pleura that attaches directly to the lung and actually folds over, and the other pleura attaches directly to the chest wall. And so there is a space between those two pleura called the pleural space. There's no real spaces in the body, only potential spaces. So normally, there is just a little cerisy fluid that helps keep those two pleura from sticking to each other. They're just able to kind of slide across each other. So when there's a signal, signal in the brain to ventilate, that signal then is um, passed down to the diaphragm. The diaphragm contracts down and the external inter intercostals move out and then air is actually pulled into the airway. So that's negative pressure ventilation. As opposed to positive pressure ventilation where air is pushed into an airway, that's not physiologic, what we do in the acute care setting with positive pressure ventilators. So this is physiologic. Normally, the lung is always kind of contracting or pulling to get to its normal smaller size, but because the pleura are attached to the chest wall, they stay open and they stay to where gases can exchange. What happens in a pneumothorax is that there is some integrity of either the visceral pleura that is attached directly to the lung surface, surface or the parietal pleura that is attached directly to the chest wall that enables air to get in between those two pleura and that is called a pneumothorax. So some reasons that could cause a closed pneumothorax, things like central line insertion, mechanical intubation that's, that's traumatizing or traumatic, emphysematous blebs could occur. It's real common with COPD patients when like little pockets of scar tissue form and then the tissue kind of bursts open and that enables air to rush into that pleural space. Reasons for open pneumothorax is gunshot wounds, stab wounds, so air is enabled to be rushed into that pleural space from the atmosphere. What do we do about it? Well, with a closed pneumothorax, we're going to look at chest tube, the implications for a chest tube, and how that actually resolves the problem. For an open pneumothorax, you have to eventually put in a chest tube as well, but you also have to cover it on three sides with an occlusive dressing. Why on three sides? So no air from the atmosphere is enabled to get into the chest wall, but air is able to come out of that pleural space. So you don't develop what we're going to look at to be a tension pneumothorax. How will the patient present? Well, they're gonna present in respiratory distress, those nonspecific findings of being short of breath. They may have some pleuritic pain, tachypnic, tachycardic. They may show what's called subcutaneous emphysema, and that is when air is escaping from, air, um, from the airway and escaping through the skin. And if you palpate it, it kind of feels like Rice Krispies a little bit. So it's not a normal finding. It's not a deadly finding or dangerous, but it is something that you need to see why that's happening. Specific findings for pneumothorax include decreased breath sounds on the affected side and hyperresonance to percussion. A tension pneumothorax is a life-threatening condition. In a tension pneumothorax, what happens is that there is a pneumothorax that is occurring. Let's, let's look at this lung, for example, and say that there is a closed pneumothorax. So what happens is that the air continues to fill up in that pleural space on that affected side. And it continues to fill up where it's completely compressed that affected lung. And then it continues on and it continues and the air continues to compress until it is compressing on the structures of the mediastinum and the heart. So now you have one side that does not ventilate and then you have compression on the cardiac chamber, which means that you're not going to have cardiac output. So that's a form of obstructive cardiogenic shock. Continues to, continues to build up to the point where it's not only affecting the affected side, 
It's affecting the structures of the mediastinum and pushing on over to the unaffected side. So now we don't have ventilation or perfusion. So it's a medical emergency. So you would see something called a mediastinal shift or a shift of the mediastinum from the affected side over to the unaffected side and also something called tracheal deviation, which is just that, a deviation of the trachea because of this buildup of air. As far as assessment goes, overlapping, decreased breath sounds on the affected side, hyperresonance to percussion, but a more extreme form of distress. This patient is in a medical emergency. Um, you would also see increased jugular veins because of decreased venous return, because of the compression on the myocardium. Patient would be cyanotic and hemodynamic instability would set in. So you have to decompress, you have to remove the air from that affected side. So I pinpointed here where the second intercostal space is located. So the second intercostal space you can actually locate on yourself by locating your clavicle and the second intercostal space is right below it. So the way that you decompress a tension pneumothorax is a large bore needle, like a 14 gauge needle, inserted into the second intercostal space mid-clavicular line to allow for escaping of the air on that affected side. I usually send my students over to a movie with George Clooney and Marky Mark called The Three Kings and George Clooney, of course, he does it um, in the field and shows, it shows kind of a, a cartoon version of needle decompression of a tension in the thorax. Now, as promised, just the concept of a hemothorax is similar to a pneumothorax except that instead of air being in the pleural space, now the pleural space is filled with blood because all of these conditions, including tension pneumothorax, eventually needs a chest tube. So that's the sex, second thing we're going to talk about. And you have to understand why the patient has a chest tube in order to manage the chest tube correctly. So it's important that we distinguish, distinguish the circumstances that require chest tube insertion and then we can manage a chest tube. Pleural effusion is just that, it's fluid, some kind of collection of fluid in the pleural space.